Now, the Omicron variant is fueling coronavirus surges across Europe. Austria, France, Germany, Italy and Norway are among countries which have posted their highest ever daily numbers of new infections in the past 24 hours. The WHO is warning that half the European population is on track to contract the variant in the next two months. Well, in the US, President Joe Biden has defended his administration's response to the rise in Omicron cases. More people are now in hospital with COVID-19 than ever before. On Monday, the US reported more than 1.3 million new infections, the highest ever daily tally for any country in the world. The strain on the healthcare system has been compounded by staff shortages as hospital workers are getting infected. Around 14 million people in a Chinese city will undergo COVID-19 tests for the second time this week. Mass testing began in Tianjin on Sunday after two cases of the Omicron variant were detected. The city is next to the capital Beijing and authorities are concerned that an outbreak could pose a risk to next month's Winter Olympics. And Indonesia has begun its rollout of vaccine booster shots to the elderly and people with weak immune systems. The jabs will be offered free of charge after initial plans to charge people for the vaccine sparked controversy. Indonesia is seeing a three-month high in new cases, largely driven by the Omicron variants. Well, since the pandemic began, countries have uh, issued different rules around masks. But that is changing because of the highly contagious Omicron variant. A study by an association of American hygienists shows that COVID particles can transmit between maskless people within 15 minutes. If two people are wearing cloth masks, it can transmit within 27 minutes. Surgical masks provide around an hour of protection between two people, while N95 masks can provide 25 hours of protection or 2,500 hours if the masks are tightly sealed. Well, we can speak now to Dr. Bharat Spankania. He's a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School. He's also an expert in infectious disease control and joins us by Skype from Bath in the UK. It's good to have you with us, Dr. Spankania. We didn't know what we were dealing with in early 2020, but two years on, uh, surely we must know, how do we protect ourselves from the coronavirus? And more specifically, this variant? In fact, we are learning new things every day and it always amazes me how much more we have to learn. So with respect to the masks, and remember, the way the masks were created and tested, they were not tested on viruses. So it's a proxy measure. The proxy measure clearly tells us two things. One, a tightly fitting mask is better than a loosely fitting mask. The second bit is a mask with a much more tighter uh, uh, water repellent fabric, in other words, smaller pores, prevents those virus particles from getting through and therefore affords more uh, protection against this more infectious variant. So is it fair to say it's now time to ditch the cloth masks if you want to protect yourself from Omicron? Do we all need to start running out and getting surgical or N95 masks? I hesitate to say so because what we can afford in the Western richer nations is not what can be afforded all over the world. So I would start by saying this. Those cloth masks, that flimsy piece of fabric that you put in front of your nose and mouth, definitely ditch that. Secondly, wear a good quality uh, mask properly. So even if you were to wear a, a surgical mask, but you wore it properly, it will afford you about 80% protection. If, on the other hand, yes, you've got supplies and you can afford it, then, of course, you can move on to your what we call FFP2 masks, which provide that much greater protection. It's not that much more. It's in the order of about 94% more. And I would avoid the FFP3 and leave that for uh, in the clinical settings only. OK. And what about scenarios where N95s or even surgical masks 
aren't readily available. You hinted at it there. There are many countries worldwide that do not have the access to the, uh, the vaccines, the boosters and the, and, and the fancy masks uh, that many in the West enjoy. What advice would you give uh, to people in developing nations uh, that really want to protect themselves from this virus uh, but don't have the same means that wealthy countries do? Well, the basics are very important, and this is a human-to-human -human transmission of infection. So stay away from crowds and stay in places which are better ventilated. That already puts you into a good position. The third position is, if you really need to make up your own mask, then make sure it is multi-layered, made with a fabric which is water repellent on the outside, absorbent on the inside, and triple layers. And make sure it fits really tight against your nose and mouth and wear it properly. So there are many things and many infection control measures that are very cheap to implement, and we need WHO and others, other countries, other, our, other governments to give this simple, easy-to-follow advice. OK, Dr. Bharat Pankania there, uh, infectious uh, disease control experts from the University of Exeter Medical School. Great to get your advice, very helpful to our viewers. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.